What's up, my Canadian cousins? Welcome back to the channel. So today is a few days before Memorial Day here in the United States. And uh, back in last November, I had done a video, a uh, Remembrance Day special, and I had done uh, several videos uh, leading up to and around Remembrance Day, focusing on remembering uh, some of Canada's fallen heroes and participation in in wars. Um, you know, I'd like to say that obviously war history interests me, but I'm not a warmonger. I, I, I don't love war. I, I think it's terrible. What's going on in Ukraine right now has me heart sick. War has been part of the um, human condition ever since we were living in caves and banded together in tribes. The wars have gotten more destructive as technology has grown. Um, at the same time, some of them were necessary and made the world better. Some were misguided. We're not really going to focus on that. What we're going to focus on is the fact that ordinary citizens of both our countries fought for the freedoms that we enjoy today. And, um, you know, since it's Memorial Day here in the United States, I wanted to take the time to remember our friends and allies and reflect back on, you know, some of the things I've learned over the course of this channel. Um, I did a video uh, about the Battle of Kapyong, for example, in the Korean War. It's something I only knew very little about. And, uh, you know, I learned what the Canadians did uh, stop Seoul from being overrun to allow the U.S. Army to regroup and um, and reinforce, and that was a, a very pivotal battle. The next day, we found one corporal whose bayonet was through his enemy, and the enemy's bayonet was through him. They both followed what they were ordered to do. To how I felt towards the Chinese. They're in the same position as us. Their government says we're going to war. I have nothing against them. Get drafted in, eh? They don't want to go. I'm positive of it. I have no hate against them. When we would defeat a position and take it, the troops would obviously search the bodies. But what would they discover in the main? Pictures of loved ones, babies, wives, children. They, like us, were ordered to fight. Just let that sink in. Um, you know, I've looked at a video about <laughs> Canadians change when they hear the word war. And if you've seen that reaction, I, I didn't much care for the uh, narrator of that because he was joking and trying to be funny at the same time. And look, I can be lighthearted, uh, but you know, just using a lot of Canadian stereotypes. Uh, I also thought his characterization of the of how the Canadians fought World War One to be um, unfair. Um, at, at the same time, he profiled you know some ama amazing uh, Canadians from World War Two and their courageousness, such as Leo Major. And After breaking his back, ribs, and both ankles when the car he was in was hit by a landmine. Leo went on a recon mission with a friend in the city of Zwolle. His friend was killed, so Major continued alone, capturing a German soldier, making the soldier take him to his officer, who was in a bar, and then telling that German officer that the Canadian <laughs> artillery was going to shell and kill them all. Leo then ran through the city, firing his gun and lobbing grenades, fooling the Germans into thinking the Canadian army was invading. All through the night, Man Major Bull captured German troops back to his camp, resting in civilian houses whenever he needed to catch his breath. He Jeez. then set a Gestapo HQ on fire and assaulted a Why? Nazi <laughs> SS HQ before meeting with members of the Dutch resistance and informing them that he had liberated the entire city <laughs> by himself. And then, my friends, there was my reaction to the Battle of Vimy Ridge and why it matters to Vimy's Canadians. cries of triumph and mourning have echoed through the decades. Then there are these inscriptions. 
it became the gravestone for uh, over 11,000 soldiers. The Vimy Memorial reached beyond its namesake battle, giving a resting place for fallen Canadians from every battlefield and a focal point for a country to remember an entire war. Mm -hmm. And though the soldiers of Vimy are all gone now, their voices help us do that. We do regard Vimy as where Canada as a nation really started. A battle that lasted less than a week, whose meaning we've interpreted for a century. However you choose to see it, the idea of Vimy Ridge will continue to rise up. Those soldiers never die, they simply fade away. Asking us not to forget. You know, and in addition to that, I've watched a video of uh, reacting to the Highway of Heroes, which was, you know, extraordinarily touching and heart-wrenching and very hard to watch. But I feel um, honored and privileged to have seen it and to know about it. say that, you know, in doing this channel and reading your comments, I've learned that uh, Canadians volunteered in Vietnam and the American army, even though your nation didn't get involved in that war. And I would like to honor those Canadians. There were Canadians that volunteered in and fought in the in American Civil War. And I would like to remember and honor those Canadians. And I've yet to do reaction videos uh, on either of those two topics, and I certainly want to get to them. Um, and learn more about them, because I confess I, I don't know much about either of those two. Having said all that, my friends, I am going to conclude with um, watching videos or a video about the changing of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at the Cenotaph in Ottawa. I've never seen it before, but I think that's a fitting way to end this Memorial Day tribute to all of those fallen, brave men and women of our wonderful neighbor and ally, the nation of Canada. Okay, my friends, I will see you on the flip side.
monument consacré et aux soldats inconnus. Présentez Art. À l'épaule, Art. Release. Take pose. Yeah, you know, so I didn't stop to comment during that because uh, I, I think any changing of the guard like that deserves complete silence. Um, so let me try to remember some of my thoughts. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've been to Arlington National Cemetery in, in Washington, D.C. I've seen the changing of the guard at the Our Tomb of the Unknown Soldier live. And it's um, it's different because it's in... A cemetery it's in a national cemetery which is you know of course tourists go through there all, all the time JFK is buried there uh, it, it was established during the Civil War it was the property of uh, Confederate General Robert E Lee that the North took away from him yeah, but my only point being is that it, it's a cemetery whereas this the cenotaph and the and the tomb is, is right in the middle of, of a urban center uh, and it's just very interesting to see the the differences of uh, you know, this happening amongst just everyday life. And remember what it symbolizes. I do understand that sometimes they, they, they alternate between, uh, you know, na naval personnel, which I think those gentlemen were in Navy uniforms, if I'm not mistaken, um, Royal Canadian Air Force, um, the Army, and even um, the Rangers. I did a video about the, the, the Canadian Rangers of the North, and I know that they have done this. So, um, yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's a fitting ending. Um, I also, in looking for this video, read and saw a piece on C CBC from maybe eight years ago or something like that, that one of the tomb guards was murdered by some crazed lunatic while on guard, while guarding the unknown soldier, guarding the tomb, and that's incredibly sad. So. On this Memorial Day weekend, I will be remembering and uh, thinking of that guard as well. Okay, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this. And I promise my next video will be less uh, solemn and less sullen and uh, more celebratory. 
All right, my friends, I will see you soon. Thanks for watching.